Hello, this is Impact, bringing you all the day's top stories. I'm Geetha Goramuthi. Hashtag I am not a virus. People of Chinese heritage say they're facing racist abuse linked to the coronavirus outbreak. Welcome to the programme. We're live for the next 15 minutes. You can give me your views at Geetha Goramuthi. Now, China has admitted shortcomings and deficiencies in response to the deadly coronavirus outbreak, and it's called for an improvement in its emergency services. More than 420 people have died so far, with more than 20,000 cases across the country. The UK has, in the last hour, advised against all travel to Hubei province, and it's encouraging its citizens to leave mainland China. Now, meanwhile, people of Chinese heritage are saying they're facing racism and prejudice as the virus spreads. Despite being no cases of the virus in London, as far as we know at the moment, the British Chinese community and businesses say they have been affected. Mum's friend was uh, sitting in, uh, on the tube. Um, a lady opposite her pointed at her, um, shouted a profanity at her and said, you are the Chinese flu. Um, and of course, racism will always be in our community. It's, there's no way to stamp it out. But again, we do, need, uh, we do need people defending the victims who, let's say, might not be able to speak English fluently enough um, to defend themselves. Previously, we served like uh, 100 people. Now, normally now, we we serve maybe uh, only 50 or maybe less. I hope, hopefully, it's short term. Well, with me in the studio is Jex Wang, who says she's been a victim of racism concerning the coronavirus. And joining us from Valencia in Spain is Paloma Chen, a journalist promoting the hashtag I'm not a virus. Thank you both for joining us today. Jex, if I can just begin with you, just tell me what, what you have found has been happening since the, the news of this virus emerged. Um, well, see, I saw all like the media hysteria and all the like racism in the media, um, just demonising Chinese people in regards to the virus, which made me really angry. So I made a post on Instagram about it and how the Chinese, I, I said that the Chinese people need support, not racism. And then because of that, a lot of people sent me quite hateful messages and they were quite racist as well. Um, I had what, sort of, what sort of things are they saying? I mean, like, you know, they called me like a dirty Chinese person, telling me to go back to China. Um, just a lot of like hate, like calling me like the C word and, and like using a lot of profanity as well. Um, I pretty, like, I would be blocking people on Instagram and they would just make more accounts to like attack me further. So it was just a bit of a mess, just like on my own phone about what had happened. Let me just bring in Paloma Chen um, from Valencia. Does this chime with the sort of uh, thing that you've been seeing and hearing about? Yeah, totally. Uh, I agree with her. Uh, basically, since we started the campaign, we have been uh, receiving uh, a lot of comments. And, you know, actually, like, uh, racism has been uh, going on, like, in our community since, uh, basically, since we're kids. But now with coronavirus, it's uh, being used as an excuse, you know, to make a lot of racist jokes, to yeah like we are hearing all the time a lot of uh, disgusting comments and and wh where in in europe is it worse i mean is it is it across the continent as far as you're seeing yeah uh, yeah well actually i uh, i think it's uh, worse in italy and in france uh the campaign of i am not a virus is starting in, in france because a lot of uh french chinese people were uh, harassed and were uh, you know like verbally attacked um, in Italy, also a lot of uh, racist events. So actually, in Spain, it has not uh, started yet. Uh, you know, the hate uh, campaign towards the Chinese, even though like in everyday life we we are uh, hearing a lot of disgusting comments. Uh, but still, it has been a campaign that we have started, let's say, to prevent. You know, and to give uh, support and love to our uh, friends in, in yeah in France and in Italy. And, and, and Jax, in, in terms of kind of dealing with that sort of abuse mm. online, how has it left you feeling? It must be very difficult. I mean, like, put it this way, I'm kind of used to it. I've, I've dealt with racial abuse my whole life, ever since I was a child. I mean, this virus, it just reminded me of what happened with SARS when I was nine years old, when that came out and I was growing up in Australia. 
my friend's parents said that they weren't allowed to hang out with me in the playground anymore in case they caught SARS from me. And at that time, I hadn't been back to like China in two years, so it's just absurd that they would even think like a child like me would have it. So that's why this time around, when I saw the coronavirus, I was just like, there's going to be more racism for my community. I need to speak out against it. I need to like, you know, just do what I can, not only to help the people in China, but also the, the diaspora in the West. What, what can you do to stop it? I mean, it? that's the thing. It's just like, I feel like, like the way I do it is like I want to try and educate people as much as I can because a lot of these hateful messages and all of these jokes they come from like a place of ignorance because people don't really understand like what the virus actually is you know they think it's some like lethal virus but like the flu kills more people so it's just like trying to educate people trying to tell like show them that their thoughts are a bit like coming from a place of ignorance and that they should like um, or even just showing that their thoughts are racist because some people don't realize that they're being racist in the first place um, so I just kind of like wrote a caption just to explain all that, hopefully. And like a lot of people did read it and was just like, oh, you're right. Like, I didn't realize my thoughts were racist. So thank you for educating me. So that's been a real positive thing. Um, but yeah, that's just like the way I thought to go about it. Just use the internet to try and educate people. And, and Paloma uh, Chen, do you think that maybe, I mean, if, if this virus is brought under control, that what's happening now will then die away too? Uh... I don't, I don't really think so. I mean, I think uh, racism and everything is still uh, gonna win, going on. And, you know, uh, actually the virus, uh, well, majority of people that get contagious by the virus uh, recovered, actually. Uh, but, you know, still people is so, so, so exaggerated and they are associating any uh, Asian face with the virus. And, yeah, like, we are really worried about the the Chinese community in schools about uh, the kids uh, because yeah they are being attacked they are being calling they have been call, uh, called uh, virus of China and everything and yeah when the virus gets under control maybe we yeah maybe maybe everyone just forget about this but we as a Chinese community we are not going to forget about this you know we still uh, yeah remember the SARS we still remember yeah all the uh, awful things that we have been called since we are kids. And, and um, Jack, so we, we saw in, in that um, brief Vox Pop, we saw, I think, one restaurant I know in Chinatown saying that there have been fewer people coming to the restaurants, for example. Mm -hmm. Isn't that sort of inevitable and that perhaps even you know, people of Chinese heritage also will be perhaps going out a bit less? Um, I mean, people are just wanting to take precautions. We've seen huge um, clampdowns on movements within China itself yeah. to try and limit the spread. I mean, like... People not going to restaurants, I find that a bit strange because it's not like, like, what are you afraid of though? Because it's, well, it's like, just a fear of mixing with, with anyone that might have been, I suppose, coming yeah, from that area. I just think like the likelihood of someone being from Wuhan in like a restaurant in Chinatown here, especially with the quarantine, that's not really, that's not really going to happen. And then it's not like the products that they get for the restaurant are shipped in from China. I'm sure they use local British products. So it's just, I don't understand where that fear is from. And then having said that, if you're not, if you don't want to mix with people, well, there's like, then don't go to any restaurant. Like, why is it just Chinese restaurants? Because, you know, Chinese people go to other restaurants. I eat Italian food. I eat, like, I go for a Sunday roast. Avoid pubs as well. It's just mm. the same kind of logic. So I think the fact that people are avoiding Chinese restaurants is just part of the xenophobia and the racism that comes with, like, the media hysteria over this virus. Paloma, I mean, are the, the you know, Chinese people that, that you're in touch with also perhaps taking precautions in terms of not... Sort of mixing publicly as well. I mean, some of the, the behaviour that you might see perhaps is just, you know, because everyone is scared of catching something they don't know very much about. Oh, yeah, but, you know, uh, I, I was born here. I have been, uh, I'm a full Spaniard. I'm a Spanish people, just like any other white person. So I have the same possibilities as any other Spanish white person to get the virus. So I don't really, yeah, I don't really understand. And, you know, also... Uh, I really want to point out that the cover of media about this is also, uh, yeah, really bad because we are making uh, the people, for example, the people in Wuhan, the Chinese people, they have been uh, blamed, blamed for the virus. We are, yeah, I don't know, we are criminalizing them and, you know, anyone can get the virus. We have the same possibilities. I mean, diseases have nothing to do really with races or with nationalities. 
Okay, Paloma Chen uh, there in Valencia and Jack Swang, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Today, much appreciated. Uh, I am back very soon. Thanks for watching.